Mid-morning in Nantgaru in South Wales, and another call comes through to the Turn to Us helpline. So the only other organisations I know possibly to help with food are places like Citizens Advice Bureau and the local council. One caller says she's just been evicted from her house. Council's moved her into a hotel, her and children, and they haven't got a penny to their name and they've got no way to cook anything. All they've got in the hotel room is a kettle, you know, so like the normal tea coffee service. And no food, no, even if they've got a food bank, how are they going to cook pasta and heat up soup? They're not going to be able to do it, are they? Do you know why they were evicted? Um, a rent arrears. How was she sounding on the phone? Desperate, yeah. Quiver in the voice, you know, she, she's upset and she's desperate and she's worried for her children. And how can I help you today? So you'd be looking at the support with uh, getting a new fridge freezer in that case, mate, yeah? I can imagine, honestly, I know, with all the prices going up. On average, this poverty charity receives 2,800 calls a week here. Nearly half of those surveyed by Turn To Us said, after paying housing, utility and council tax bills, they've nothing left over. So the headphones here echo with personal appeals. These are typical examples. Um, I, I've got no electricity or food to feed my daughter. I, I'm, I'm so sorry, I just can't stop crying. I'm struggling financially, really struggling. I don't know what to do. Do you know where I go for help with a school uniform? My daughter often sees me in tears and says, Mummy, what's the matter? What's the hardest call you've had to take? If, if they put the phone down and you're saying that they're going to end their life within the next couple of minutes, you know, and then you have to call them back. And if you can't get hold of them, you know, and then you have to... Hopefully you've taken the details from them to get some sort of help to them, be it an ambulance or the police, to do a welfare check. But, <laughs> frankly, once that's happened, it's, it's out of my hands, so to speak, so the team leader will deal with it, but it's still there in my head, you know? So, yeah, so that number that I've just given you is the contact number for the emergency support yeah, payment um, from from the council. They provide benefits advice here, identify potential grant schemes and point to other support services. Transfer this information as well. This is the charity a 33-year-old primary school teacher from Bridge End has turned to. A father of two, he has a full-time salary, his wife is a student nurse, but they are struggling. Because I worry that is there going to be enough food left at the end of the month, enough money to buy food at the end of the month to feed the kids? Is there going to be enough money to, in the account to put petrol in the car, you know? And is there going to be enough money to pay those last couple of bills that got to go out at the end of the month? Um, and it does create a great deal of anxiety. Every time you see a price rise at the petrol pump or going into the shops, how much does that have an impact on you? It makes me sick. It really, I just, I look at it and part of me wants to be able to shut off from it and just think, I can't worry about it, but you do. You sort of, I mean, the petrol pump is the perfect metaphor for it because you sit there and you watch your money just disappear. The prices have gone up and wages have just stagnated. As recipients of Universal Credit, they'll receive two instalments of a £650 cost of living payment. But like a majority of Turn To Us users polled, believe these and other measures will still leave them with a shortfall. When we were going home... Right. They say their rent's risen, it's unaffordable, so they're moving in with his parents. And you're working at a school yes. in a relatively de yeah. socially deprived area? Yeah, and I, I can't fathom how families in there are finding it because as a professional on a relatively good salary, I'm finding it hard. 200 miles away in Lincolnshire and another family has asked the charity for help. Gary Waterhouse had to give up his work to help care for his wife, Natasha. They're receiving benefits but are struggling with rising energy bills. I've been, I won't say forced, but uh, it has been a, a strong persuasion uh, that I've now taken up part-time taxi work uh, so I can work around Natasha's needs just to get food on the table to make sure we can 
adhere to our current bills. Just opened a letter. We've got charges of a grand. God, it's not me for six. I, I just wondered whether I was eligible for a grant or not. I am a pensioner. I am a single mum. My electricity is about to go, and we haven't got enough food until the next universal credit payday. And have you ever contacted us before? At the helpline, they tell us more and more in full-time work are calling in. Teachers that have taken second jobs as Domino's delivery drivers that are delivering to their students because they simply can't afford to live on a teacher's wage. You know, nurses that are having to access food banks because they're not able to manage on the income that they're bringing home even though they're working 12-hour shifts. I feel like people are trying their very, very best to be independent, to work, to contribute, to bring something more to society and are being failed. The Chancellor spoke again today of a £37 billion package to help UK households. The Welsh Government announced an extra £200 payment for more low-income households. But as inflation continues to soar, for many, it appears a cost-of-living crisis only likely to deepen. Andy Davis reporting there. And if you've been affected by the issues highlighted in Andy's report, you can access support via the Channel 4 website. Go to channel4.com support and find the hardship section.